What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny For Real, where we talk mostly about basketball. I say mostly because inside of this basketball talk, I have very obscure Simpsons references that only a few people in the comment section can ever find out. Me and you, the guy that's, that's, that sees the references, we're in the same wavelength here, buddy. Me and you are best friends forever, forever. Combining our two favorite things, basketball and the Simpsons, a W, a W. Uh, we just wrapped up the longest season of NBA history. I don't know the exact number of days. I'm guessing about 300, maybe a little bit more than that. And it was great. It was great. But it's ended. And I'm not ready to, like, stop the basketball talk and stop the basketball dribbling. We had a period of time this year where there was no basketball for months. And guess what I did? Nothing. For months, I didn't do anything. And I don't want that to happen again. So I'm already thinking about next season. Of course, we're going to have free agency, draft, um, uh, trades, all of that stuff is going to happen in these next couple months. But I'm already thinking about when the ball is back on the court. And guess who's going to be out there? Hopefully the fans. Hopefully when the season comes back, the fans are allowed to go to these games. Because I'm a season ticket holder, baby. I want to watch my Bulls, especially now that everybody, everything that we hated about the Bulls is gone. I'm ready to watch, you know. So I've seen rumors around MLK Day is like their timetable, their goal to try to get next season going. I don't know for sure. You know, I don't know for sure. But one thing I do want to say, and this is probably the title of the video because this is what's on my brain, and that's what, the, that's what this channel is. It's just me, microphone, and camera, and just talking about what's on my brain. Next season has the potential to be one of the greatest seasons of all time. Is that clickbaity? Potentially a clickbait title, but I, I, I don't mean it in a clickbaity way. Look at all the videos here on this channel. How many of them have been clickbait? This many. That's not a motion I want to do. Zero of them. Zero of them have been clickbait. I really do believe that next season could have the potential to be the greatest season of all time, and I'll explain to you why. First thing is, the last couple seasons, the last half a decade, maybe even, look at me, I'm on my game. The last decade or so, half a decade, we kind of knew who was going to make it to the finals, right? We knew that the Warriors were coming out the West, especially after Kevin Durant got there. We knew the Warriors were going to come out the West, and LeBron's team was going to come out the East, whoever it may be. In, in this case, it was Cleveland Cavaliers, but then again, you had the, the Heat. That's what we knew, and guess what? I still watched 82 games. Every night I watched a game of basketball. Even though I knew that the final product, the last two teams, were going to be uh, uh, Cleveland Warriors or Miami, whoever. We knew it. And even this season, this season was supposed to be the first year of parity. First year of parity. The first time we don't know for sure who's going to make the finals. And guess what? A lot of the experts got it wrong. A lot of the experts picked the Clippers to win it all. Boom. They couldn't even make it out of the second round. A lot of the experts picked the Bucks to make it to make it to um they picked the Bucks to make it to the finals out east. They were wrong. This legitimately was a year of parody. Now, I know it's easy for us right now in hindsight to say we knew that the Lakers are gonna be gonna be champions, but not many people did. We knew that the Lakers were gonna be good. We knew that LeBron and Anthony Davis is a pairing that we have not seen before. But our our main question as far as like the regular people, what about the rest of the roster? And what we found out is literally don't really matter that much when you have two top five, top six, top seven players. It doesn't. Do you have people that can potentially catch and shoot? Y yes. Cool. Do you have people that'll give it all on the defensive side of the ball? Yeah. Cool. Do you have a guy named Rajon Rondo who's known for his playoff work? Yes. Cool. That's the NBA championship roster. And do you have a good coach? I don't want to say anything bad about Frank Vogel. Shout out to him. So it's easy for us to say right now that, yeah, the Lakers were the favorite, but they really weren't going into the season. I've talked about it, but all the graphics, ESPN, and all of these big platforms, they were putting, like, who has the highest odds to make it. The Lakers are, like, number six. We even saw people – okay, I don't want to talk about people. People were having the Lakers not even make the playoffs. Like, come on, bro. Like, come on, bro. Cut it out. Cut it out. Either, either way, either way. Next year's championship is going to be even harder to predict than this year's championship. And here's why. I put together a list. Wow. A little preparation for me on, like, certain teams that should be in championship contention. Just straight off rip. We're going to have the Lakers. Of course. We're going to have the Bucks. Of course. I mean, you're going to have – if you're going to have Giannis for at least one more, at least one more season – because we don't really know what's going to happen after that. We have Giannis, your championship quality contending team. Now, I understand he hasn't got to the championship or the first. I think they got conference finals last year, but they haven't really been there. But we know them for sure as a team that can win a championship. They just haven't been able to. That's what I mean. Um, Lakers, of course. Bucks, Lakers, Clippers will still be in contention next year. And they, I've never seen a more do-or-die season in the history of my life than the Clippers next season. They have to get those fans a championship. They have to. Because if they don't, and Paul George walks, and Kawhi walks, 
You remember that time before Chris Paul and Blake Griffin got to the Clippers and it was nothingness, just straight darkness? You're going to go back into that if you don't win a championship or you don't get close enough to convince these guys to resign. That's the thing that's at stake. It's either you win a championship or you're bad for eight years. There's no in-between. There's no in-between for this Clippers roster, this Clippers team. So that they will still be a contender. The Celtics, the Celtics are a legit, will be a legitimate contender. Two years, or two out of the last three years, they made it to the conference finals. Um, went to game seven with LeBron, where Jason Tatum dunked on LeBron. That was his rookie season. Oh, my God. That is insane. And uh, last year, last year was a bit weird. The Kyrie Irving thing didn't work out. And then this year, they got back to the conference finals after beating the defending champions and stuff. So, like, they're, they're going to be a team that's going to be up there. And I wouldn't be surprised if they made a move. And I don't mean anything super significant. The core value, the core players will still probably be there, but, like, upgrades in the smaller portions. But every single year, this is what we've seen. Jason Tatum, jump, jump, jump. It may go a little bit under the radar, but jump, jump, jump. He was an all-star this year, right? Jalen Brown, jump, jump, jump. And I don't care what nobody tells me, bro. Before the all-star game this season, it was a real conversation on who should be in the all-star game. Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum. Now, I understand. After the all-star game, Jason Tatum turned it up to the third degree. He went crazy for a month straight. But before the actual game, Jalen Brown was on a lot of the ballots, y'all. That's how good he was. And then he backed that up, and then doing the bubble, he played very well. These, these are two young players that continuously get better. I don't know why they wouldn't get better next season. So you talk about contenders, they should be in there as well. Cool. And I ain't even mentioned Kemba Walker was always going to be an all-star caliber point guard. Cool. The Nuggets. We don't know if what bubble Jamal Murray is a real thing, but if it is, they're a contending team. They are. They're a contending team if that's real. You bring back Jeremy Grant, which we don't know if that's going to be possible because he's going to get paid. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. probably going to take a jump. That's a contending team. You saw what they were able to do. Who am I missing? Who am I missing? Uh, 76ers. I don't know if I'm putting them in the contender category, but if we're, we're going, when the season start, we have to see what Doc Rivers' plan is with this team. It's kind of weird that they hired Doc Rivers, obviously because he, he's a good coach. Um, he's a good coach. But one of the other reasons that nobody's really talking about is the, the coach throughout his entire career, Tobias Harris' entire career, the coach that was able to get the most out of Tobias Harris has been Doc Rivers. The year or half a year, however long it was, he was on the Clippers, was his best form of basketball ever. He was playing the power forward position. He was getting the mid-range jump shots he's, he's accustomed to, and he had the best numbers of his career. Bringing Doc Rivers in, I know it's going to sound crazy that you signed Doc Rivers for Tobias Harris, but the amount of money you invested in Tobias Harris, you need him to be good. And Doc Rivers might be able to do that. And Doc Rivers is probably going to have a different scheme with Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons than Brett Brown was. God bless his heart. He tried his best. But Doc Rivers is a significantly better coach than Brett Brown was, right? So we're going to see a different scheme for them. I don't know if I want to put them in a contender yet, but they have contender talent. It's about putting them together to be a contender, right? Brooklyn Nets. I don't need to explain to you why the Brooklyn Nets will instantly be a contender based on what we know now. Kyrie Irving, Kevin uh, Kevin <laughs> Durant, I almost said Car Car Garnett, uh, top players in the league, top players at their position, top three at their position, um, maybe, I don't know. We're just rambling here. You understand why they will be a contender, and then they have depth on top of it. Now you could see them making a trade this offseason to get more top-heavy, whatever it may be. They're a contending team. The Warriors, Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond back. Wiggins is on the roster, top five pick, top three pick. There's so many different possibilities for that Warriors team. And who else? Who else is out here? And then that doesn't even include, like, the borderline teams. Like, I wouldn't be surprised the Raptors are good again next season. I wouldn't be surprised if the Rockets put it together. Oh, I didn't even mention the Heat, who just had a finals appearance. There are so many very good teams going into next season. I do not know who I would put my money on. I'm predicting that the playoffs next season is going to be amazing. There's not going to be that many bad series. Because even at the bottom of the Eastern Conference, you know how like Giannis and them usually have a cakewalk. They may lose a game in the first round, but for the most part, it's it's a cakewalk. Or whoever the two seed, cakewalk. Because the, the seven and the eight seed in the Eastern Conference are usually trash. Bro, there are teams on the up and up. The Atlanta Hawks are going to be a solid team next season. And if they made the playoffs, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't want to sound like a homer here, but the Bulls. The Bulls could make some noise and potentially slide into a playoff spot. Maybe, maybe. I'm just throwing it out there. New front office, new regime, everything. You know, there are teams like that, right? There are teams like that. And out west, out west, you got teams like the Suns. I mean, out west, the Western Conference always 
provides when it comes to the playoffs. One one in eight seeds, like one through eight, is always a good team. So it's going to be even harder to do that now. You know, Pelicans getting better. I just think that next season has the potential to be great because as I'm looking at every team here, as I'm looking at every team here, I don't see a team out here that's like undoubtedly tanking next year, right? I don't see a team here. Every team will be trying to win games to make a playoff spot. Sure, there are going to be teams that are going to be worse at it, <laughs> like the Cavs, and watch somebody clip this and the Cavs make the playoffs next season. The Cavs will probably not make the playoffs, but they have, they're have they going to have enough pieces to, if you're going to Cleveland, you're not going to win by 20 every night. I don't know what's going on with the Knicks. I got to see your free agency is like for the Knicks, but the, every team is going to be out there competing. They're another another team that's like, obviously it's not do or die, but another team with a lot of pressure on them is the Minnesota Timberwolves. You're like, Kenny, Minnesota Timberwolves, bro. That team didn't even make the playoffs last year. Why is there pressure on? Um, they have the first overall pick. Hey, um, they traded a lot for D'Angelo Russell. The best, the best draft pick that's not owned by their team is that team. Do you get what I'm saying? That draft pick that they gave away to the Warriors, top three protected for 2021's draft class. And from everything I've read, 2021's draft class has legendary potential. They gave that pick away to get D'Angelo Russell. So you need him and Carl Anthony Towns to play well together. You need whatever you need to, whatever you do with that first overall pick has to work out. And all the rumors I've seen is that they're scared to make a draft pick. They already said that they missed on Jericho. They're not even giving him another shot. They missed. And we're afraid to miss again. So they might trade it. I don't know. I don't know. So I know I didn't hit every team here, but there are teams of Luka in them, probably going to be better. 100% going to be better. So that's why I believe that next season has the potential to be one of the best seasons ever. Let me know what you think in the comment section. I haven't even talked about free agency. We can see more stuff happen in free agency. One of these teams that I mentioned is just like a good team could be great next season because of free agency or because of trades or because of whatever. A lot of things can happen. I'm just super excited. Shout out to Tony Kukoc. I'm out. Peace.